Welcome to the Bio Balance Health Cast, episode number 459, Sex and Libido in America. Bio Balance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of Bio Balance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. So today we're beginning a series on sex and libido in America. And we're starting with the, um, the question, the conundrum of why are older Americans getting divorced more frequently than they have in the past and more frequently than younger Americans? And what is the motivation for that? And what sets up uh, these people to get divorced after they've been married for maybe many years or they've been married many times and, yeah. and they get divorced again? And the, and the statistics are fascinating about it. And when you look at the statistics, the, uh, the odds that you'll get divorced in later years are greater if you've been married multiple times, mm -hmm. if you've had more sex partners in your life before you were married. Uh, and, and we'd like to know why. I mean, we, we have some postulations. We can say, well, mm -hmm. we think it's because of this, we think it's because, and that, because and of that. And that's based on years of you doing couple counseling yeah. and years of me talking to women 30 more or more years talking to women in my GYN practice and then talking to couples now mm -hmm. in in my uh, anti-aging practice, finding out what they're thinking and why they're making the changes that they're making or even why they're coming to me, many of them, uh, to get their sex life back so that they stay married to the same person. Because I think the one thing about marriage is that I find interesting and that I never really thought about before is that it's the one relationship that requires that you only do something with your partner, meaning you can't go outside of this. It's, and it is sex. Sex right. is the one thing that is restricted. So if you're in a marriage and your partner and you diver diverge mm -hmm. uh, from your normal sex life or from a sex life that is uh, adequate for you, but not adequate for them. I was going to say, normal sex life is is a not a term of art. It's no. just a, it's a phrase people use. And, and I was asked I mean, so many times in normal. counseling, exactly, what's normal? You know, mm -hmm. and how do we measure us compared to other people? If, mm -hmm. if we're having sex once a day and we've married three years, is that normal? And I would say that's not statistically average, but it's not abnormal. It's not. I mean, Wrong in, Everybody in has a different appetite for food. And I use that because that's what Masters and Johnson used to say. Yeah. That you get two people together from different backgrounds and, and you throw them into a marriage where it is where you're basically confined to have sex with just each other. And right. then you are one person wants to have sex every day and one person wants to have sex twice a week. And and the whole goal of therapy is to to get a compromise and say, okay. So we'll have sex three times a week or four times a week or part, every other week it's three times and then four times. Part of the challenge, though, in doing therapy is the presenting problem is almost never the problem. <laughs> so they come in yeah. arguing because one of them uh, is mad about money distribution. I mm -hmm. want to buy a new washing machine and he won't let me you know, he, because he wants to buy a new bass boat. <laughs> and you're like, okay, so how do we figure this out? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so they start until they find out if they can trust you and feel comfortable mm -hmm. with you. They start arguing and fighting and, and Over debating. Over something superficial. Well, no, they're real things, but they're not the central issue. Mm -hmm. But sex is always a central issue mm -hmm. in a relationship that's out of balance. And so then you start to talk to them about, well, how are you sexual? And initially they'll, they'll say, fine. Especially men. Oh, fine. Oh, it could be better, but it's fine. And one of them and, goes. And it's not fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and so, but so then you start exploring, well, why is it not fine? And there are religious and cultural 
indoctrinations that occur in our society as, as we age and as we become hormonal teenagers and start to fantasize and masturbate and look around and say, well, who, who do I want? Who can I get? Who will take me? Mm -hmm. uh, sex is messaged in all of our advertising and all of our marketing and all of our movies are, are much more blatant uh, and, and specific than they used to be. But our, our society is different than like France. France has a lot of sex in their advertising, but they also have a laissez-faire attitude about sex for their children. They yeah. don't say sex is terrible. You're, you should never have sex. That's, you know, cause I don't understand how children can become young adults and then go from hating sex, thinking it's a terrible thing yeah. to getting married. And then the whole thing changes. Right. I watched young women and young men go through this and oftentimes they'll come to me with infertility and they've been married three years. They have never had sex Ooh. because one of them just can't because she was, she was in a very fundamentalist church yeah. and, and they said it was a terrible thing. So she believes it's still a terrible thing. She can't get over it. Well, and there have been myths perpetuated in our society that women who had orgasm or who enjoyed sex or mm -hmm. who wanted sex were in some way morally deficient. That was a long time ago. It though. was a long time ago, but but people grew up with those messages, and that's my point. Even what, whatever the messages today mm -hmm. are that you give to your children, as they grow up, they have to balance what they were taught against what they feel or what mm -hmm. they and their partner want. And so the critical ingredient for me there is the ability to communicate and mm -hmm. be comfortable with who you are and say, I would like to try this. Are you open to trying that? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, no, that's sinful. We can't do that. That's dirty. That's whatever. Then, and then where do we go? So, so it's an imbalance sometimes of power. Mm -hmm. It's an imbalance sometimes of openness. Mm -hmm. It's an imbalance sometimes of exhaustion. You know, American women in today's world have jobs and children and, and commitments and responsibilities beyond just being the wife. Mm -hmm. Who waits for me to come home and please me at that the was, end of the that day? That was way gone. That was in way the 60s. back. I know, but so the divorce rates have skyrocketed. Way gone, way back. They didn't divorce all that often because mm -hmm. they couldn't afford to, and they couldn't socially be and acceptable really if they were couldn't. divorced. You had to prove certain things to get a right. divorce. There was no no fault divorce then. Right. You had to prove that your your husband. I mean, you, the level of proof for a woman to get divorced from a man was huge, and the level of, of proof for a man to get divorced from his minimal. wife was minimal. Yeah. So it was very uneven in our society. It, now, women have jobs. They can, they can leave because so, they can support themselves. So what's fascinating for me about this is I studied the anthropology, the sociology, the psychology of all these things. Mm -hmm. I did not study the medicine. And since mm -hmm. I've been working with you, I've found a lot of medical information that I had no knowledge mm -hmm. about that impacts libido mm -hmm. and desire and satisfaction in in behavior sexual. Mm -hmm. And so I now have to factor what I'm learning there into my understanding of relationship issues and sex issues in relationships when I try to counsel people. Uh, because you've taught me there's a whole field of knowledge that I had nothing to, to contribute to. Well, I mean, I, I, I blatantly say, basically I make a blanket statement of most libido is chemical. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you don't have some terrible trauma in your background, if you haven't been raped or abused or right. or or been uh, encamped in, in a um, right wing religious yeah. uh, kind of compound, and you've seen real life, then basically it's about how much testosterone you have and how sensitive your body is to that testosterone. Mm -hmm. So it's a genetic thing, and also how much testosterone you make, both in men and women, and so. I get people after they've been married for a long time, usually, or uh, 10 years usually is my average at, at least. And then they come in and they say, we had, we had a great sex life and now we don't. And now she doesn't want to have sex and mm -hmm. I'm going to leave if she doesn't start, you know, right. you know, yeah. he's cracking the whip over her or he sit, comes in crying. He's crying because he doesn't think she wants him anymore. And she's like, I just don't feel like having sex. Right. So and those are, those are. And she said, with all honesty, I love him. I want to be married yeah. to him. But I, I have a great life. I just don't want feel to feel like sex matters. Right. And I don't I, want it. That's right. And yeah. so, so I see people when they're they have they've worked out all these other things in their marriage in in the past, and now they've come to the middle of their marriage, and they go, "Wait a minute! Now things have changed, and now what am I going to do about that? 
like somebody with a good sexual desire and his, and it's usually the male and his wife goes, no, I don't think I'm doing that. What do you do? I mean, you can masturbate, you can, um, you can look at porn or, I mean, which are not necessarily the best ideas because you're still distancing yourself from your partner and she knows it. Right. And well, there are even some studies now showing or recent studies that more people are masturbating with an electronic device in their hand, even in bed next to their partner, watching porn uh, on a hmm. on an iPad or a, a cell phone or something, than having sex with their partner. And what's that about? Well, we don't know. It's just a fairly recent phenomenon. Uh-huh. We have some assumptions, some of which is it has to do with the connectivity of the relationship, mm-hmm. and the more we have mediated communications mm-hmm. uh, devices by mm-hmm. which we, you, you, teenage kids can go in their bedroom and get on the internet and see whatever they want to see. It's out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and parents will say, well, the, we, don't, we don't have those kind of movies in our house. Well, you don't have to anymore. Mm-hmm. They sext each other on the mm-hmm. phone. Uh, they watch pornography. Uh, so their view of sex is individual sex with themselves, basically, right. because they've been told that you can't have sex with well, your And they control their somebody own pleasure. The other if you're in sex. a relationship... You have to pay attention to your partner, and you have to say, does she like this? Does he want that? Mm-hmm. Should I do this? They ask for things, and they're like, oh, wait, I can't do that. But if you're just masturbating and watching porn. It's easier. It's a whole lot easier. So the shortest distance to get to where you want to go. But but we when we were looking at the, the relationships that we had, the only other two options after we got through all these others right. was divorce or affair. Right. And they found a different option by coming to me to get one of their sex drives back in order or right. both of them back in order sometimes. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, so this, is, this is the medical part so, of it. So some of the medical complications. It, 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 it can it's cause very bad often sex testosterone. Life. Mm-hmm. And so if you lose the testosterone, you lose the libido. And, and there are studies that will show, uh, for instance, men in their 40s and 50s who begin to have trouble having erections will get medicine for erections, mm-hmm. and they'll take it, and they'll get an erection. But they quit taking it very often uh, within the first three months or a year mm-hmm. because it doesn't improve the quality of their sex life. They have an erection, and they think, oh, good, now I can do it. But what they don't have is libido. Right, the, and the physical libido part is from works. the loss of the testosterone. Right. So, so sometimes you give them the, the testosterone, and too. they don't need the ED drug mm-hmm. anymore. Right. And then sometimes they still need it because they have other issues like diabetes or obesity mm-hmm. that are factored into loss of ability to, to be sexual. So most of the time we're, in men, we're dealing with sex drive in both sexes. And then in men, we're looking at right. the ability to perform because in women, usually we can perform – with with high blood pressure and obesity and we I mean right. we don't have to perform in the same way so being able to have sex is different now obesity so you're more can concerned be about so making severe sure you're lubricated right that's and, the one and, big issue and for lubrication women. can be taken care of with estrogen right or or topical estrogen the estrogen tablets or estrogen cream in the vagina so those things can be fixed for women but desire is the biggest issue for both of them testosterone is is the answer to desire. And they come up with all these pills, and I have never figured this out. The FDA keeps saying, got a new pill for desire, and they don't work when they already have a hormone that they could use for desire, but they won't. Yeah. And I don't understand that at all. It's cheap. It's e- cheaper than these pills, and it's easier, and you don't have to t- take it, like, on a demand basis. So but it would be easier for sell, women. They, they can't own the testosterone. Right. Uh, license uh-huh. and make I a know. lot of money selling testosterone, but they so, can with some other. But you would think that the FDA would be able to bypass that, but it doesn't one, matter. One, yeah, they're not. But they're we not digress. See our, we're not going to see yeah. our way through it, but that's why they have all these, all these pills for women's desire that just don't work. So we've talked about, and, and I, I want to get back to the aging and libido mm-hmm. thing. But since we're talking about the reasons why you have sex or ways that you have sex. Uh, recent study showed that 84% of women say they have sex uh, in order to get their husbands to do part of the housework or to do some specific thing that they want, you know, take take me on vacation. Which uh, means that they're not enjoying it. Yeah. So it's, means- it's functional performance behavior as a bribe or a reward. So what could that be? That could be that they still, they don't have any desire anymore, so they're just using it as a, as a chip to kind of... Uh, you know, pass back and forth. You do this for me. I do this for you. Or 
Um, it, it could be that they're bored and they just don't feel like, I mean, they've had the same sex every day for years and years and years and they're like, ah, oh, it's the same old thing. You know, women do need to be something more than a depository for sperm. Well, we need to have, we need to have relationships. We need to talk. We need to that, have That's a factor of aging for men. When, when men are younger, it's all about orgasm. Mm -hmm. Just get off. I mean, that's the whole mm -hmm. drive, the reason for, for being. As they mature, if mm -hmm. they mature, mm -hmm. then they learn more about intimacy and connectivity and being in a, a space with their partner where they feel an affection and mm -hmm. an, they have an awareness of how is my partner responding? Am I pleasing her? Am I satisfying her? Is this well, they what should, she wants? ideally. Ideally, they should. But that's about the same but time their testosterone gives don't. out. Well, so then as that happens, intersecting arcs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then, then their performance does, isn't as good. So, yeah. so it's not one makes the other happen. It's just that it's just timing. So yeah, you're right. If that were the case, if that were actually what kept people to kept people together, then people wouldn't get divorced in their, uh, in their late fifties. It 50s. would, it would help reduce that. Uh, but the, but the statistics again say, Part of the reason that the divorce rates are going up between 50 and 60 is that they had divorced earlier. The, the more oh, yeah. marriages that you've had, the more mm -hmm. ready you are to. I mean, you realize if I get in a marriage, it's not the end of the world. If I get out of one, I, I'll live through it and I've I'll it go before. on. I've done mm -hmm. it before. So it becomes a more acceptable thought process to say, why am I doing this? Why am I staying with this? If, if these things don't get better for me, why would I stay? Well, women say the same thing. Absolutely. Men or women mm -hmm. are reaching that point where they say, and so the studies are showing that the more times you've been married and the less duration of mm -hmm. those times, the more likely the next time will occur. Right. So you, you'll you be a two or three time loser in terms of being able to be married. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that that kind of makes sense. And so as we get older, we have more marriages behind us. Yeah. Or, well, or that again, people the, do. those numbers are increasing and we're trying to figure out what can we do about that. So what, another statistic was less than half of uh, women want regular sex after four years of marriage. That's an amazing statistic. Which means they're not, they never were getting what they wanted or they would still want it. Or they weren't getting that. That binding, that binding that they wanted, or they're distracted by their children and other things that they have to take care of, and they can't. Yeah, we we have that factoid, but we don't have enough explanation behind it to understand why is that happening. I mean, again, you think in younger married couples with small children and two jobs. I can see. I've heard. I've been told a million times by women that say, "I just don't have the energy for it. Mm -hmm. It's the last. I, I want it. I know he wants it. I want to do it, but my baby's crying." I've got to get mm -hmm. lunches ready for school tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I have to do a load of laundry because I, I got to go to work tomorrow. So, and he's not doing the laundry, which comes back to the eighty-four percent of women right. will have sex in order for him to do more of those things. Mm -hmm. What what they're not doing about it is talking about it. The communication capacity to say, "I'm not happy here. This is not working for me." But it's hard to talk about. It is hard to and talk so, about, and that's why we have counselors. Because <laughs> if you have, if you have a marriage issue, getting testosterone is not necessarily enough because usually a lot of damage has been, has occurred prior to, prior to you coming to me. Patterning, habituation. Yeah. And so a lot of couples fall into the Wednesday night while the kids are at ball practice and Saturday morning I'm before talking they about get up. Damages uh -huh. occurred in the relationship because there was no sex. Okay. And so they need to then go to a counselor to start communicating and then getting having better sex, which is always an issue. If you read and Cosmopolitan, asking, they tell you how to have better sex every month. And, and asking the essential questions. Do you want me anymore? Do you mm -hmm. still find me attractive? Mm -hmm. Then how come you don't want to have sex? You know, what's the block? Is mm -hmm. it something that I'm doing? And being able to hear the answer. And those are good it's, questions it's for you to remember. You're doing, it's something you're not doing. Not everybody well, can what do you mean? think of this. Well, foreplay. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just should, Coming in, mount me, you know, talk to me, <laughs> hug me, kiss me, uh, encourage yeah. me, arouse uh -huh. me. Uh, those things can happen if you make an effort, but you don't make the effort. And it's, so then it's like, well, but you never seem to be, you know, they, so then they fight, they fight about, about that right? instead of really changing the whole sexual dance. A lot of people will, I mean, I have people who've told me that 
their husbands want to have sex, but they don't touch them. They don't. They exactly. don't talk about it. They don't tell them. They don't even have an idea they want to have sex that night. And then all of a sudden they go to bed and they're like, time. You know, so so the the wife can't get ready for it. The woman in the rela- relationship can't like mentally start gearing up for this, which sometimes they have to do. Well, sometimes it's even the timing of the desire search. At the end of the day, when you're tired and exhausted and go to bed, do you really want to get up the energy to have sex or do you want to sleep and mm-hmm. then maybe have sex in the morning? Mm-hmm. But then in the morning, the alarm goes off well, you and you've to allowed get up yourself earlier. an hour. I mean, you have to wake up earlier. Earlier, because kids have to get up, have to have their breakfast, have to mm-hmm. send them off to school. I have to get dressed and go to work. You have to get dressed and go to work. So mm-hmm. we got two and a half minutes here before I need to take a shower. Can you get it done in that <laughs> amount of time? How much intimacy is involved in that? Right. You know, is that just the payoff, the, mm-hmm. the kiss and a promise? Uh, and, or do you set an alarm an hour earlier mm-hmm. so that you have an hour to be romantic? Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a lot of complicating issues that there you are a lot have of ways to be able to, to talk about. Too. There are, but you, but have, to you have to talk about it. And if you can't communicate, then no amount of testosterone is going to fix it. Although testosterone does help when people have been communicating and saying, I'm not happy. Well, if you want to keep your marriage together then you should at least consider getting the the hormone back that you need to have a sex drive before you end up in a bad circumstance. And in the meantime, you have to take care of your health. You've got to watch your blood pressure. You've got to watch your alcohol consumption. You've got to watch your weight. You've got to find out about many, your testosterone. Many of these things affect both your sex drive and your and your sexual function, both men and women. And so you have to be healthy. So being healthy, I, even though I've seen, I, I've had many patients who weren't particularly healthy but had a good sex life, it's, that's the exception, not the rule. So as you can tell, there are many pieces of information and many questions, not a lot of answers, but we're looking for those answers. So we'll have some continued conversations about sex and libido in America. Please join us for those. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.